Often, you find lists about the best 9mm pistols, best 45 ACP pistols, or best 1911 style handguns, and so on. However, all of them limit the scope of the comparison. So, it's time to just get rid of these limits. Here, we compare all semi-automatic pistols on the planet and see which of them deserve to be in the top five. Size, caliber, or brand, all this does not matter here. What does matter is how popular these pistols are. This is the vote of the shooters, the military, and law enforcement. All of them, or rather, all of us strive to get the best of the best. That means that these semi-automatics, most of us, be it as civilians or as the military and law enforcement community, gravitate to most be the best of the best. Number 5, the 1911. Yeah, I mean, you saw that coming. And you were right. The 1911 design is one of the oldest that is still in production and used today. In fact, there's still new small details here and there added, further refining the original work, making it one of the most enduring designs ever made. Invented by legendary John Moses Browning, it was the first semi-automatic pistol ever adopted by the U.S. Armed Forces. For that, it had to pass a 6,000-round torture chest to prove that it was reliable enough to be used on the field of battle. At the same time, it became almost the most powerful sidearm to be standard issue to any armed forces of the world, thanks to it being chambered in 45 ACP. Not only was this beauty adopted by the U.S. military, it also stayed in service for almost 75 years. While it was replaced as the standard issue sidearm, it went on to serve for a lot of years with special units. Apart from that, it's also still popular on the civilian market 111 years after it was designed. To this day, you can buy new production 1911s that closely resemble the original, as well as updated designs that are often referred to as 2011s. These are double stack pistols with a high capacity and new look, but function internally exactly like a 1911. Many buy the 1911s and 2011s for a sentimental value or as a collector's item, while others still carry them for self-defense. Number 4, the Glock 17. Yeah, you wanted it, you waited for it, here it comes. The Glock, or more specific, the Glock 17 and 9mm. This is a semi-automatic handgun that belongs to the most durable handguns ever made. It has a service life of more than 250,000 rounds, with a round count of 10,000 to each jam. Sporting a tenifer finish and polymer, it's more rust-resistant than stainless steel. Drop it from a helicopter, what can happen during an air assault or an altitude of 400 feet, and you'll still find it on the ground ready to do its work. Freeze it in a solid block of ice, get it out of it, and, again, it'll shoot just fine. Introduced in 1982, it was a real novelty. It came with a polymer frame, and it was striker-fired. It did not take long for it to take over the law enforcement and the civilian market, not least also because of its capacity of 17 plus 1 rounds. Now, you might think that the 17 and Glock 17 comes from the capacity of the magazine, but that is not the case, as much as the Glock 19 does not come with 19 rounds in its standard mag. Instead, it was just the patent number 17 for the company, hence the name Glock 17. Number 3, the Browning High Power P35. Here comes another great success of John Browning. And before you ask, his three most enduring inventions was the 1911, the High Power, and the M2 Maduce, 50 caliber heavy machine gun. However, it must be said that the great inventor himself passed away in 1926 before his work on the High Power was finished so that a Belgian gun designer continued it for him until it was completed in 1935, making for the designation the P-35. The High Power was the product of John Browning competing with himself. After designing the 1911 and selling the rights to Colt, he went on to design the High Power to make it better than the first design, but without violating the patent. The result was a single-action semi-auto chambered in 9mm. The BHP, the Browning High Power, was the first of his so-called Wonder 9s. In a time where the standard for semi-automatic pistols was a capacity of 8 rounds, the BHP came with 13 in the magazine plus 1 in the chamber. This was the first double-stack 9mm autoloader, and as such, way ahead of its time. Oh, an interesting side note, the high power does not stand for great ballistic power round by round, but for the high capacity of the gun. Over time, it became the most widely used military, police, and counter-terrorist pistol in the world, and it stayed so for decades. 
The list of users include, for example, the British SAS and the hostage rescue team of the FBI. What is also interesting about this gun is that it was at times even produced by Nazi Germany when the FN factory was occupied. There was a shortage for German-made sidearms at the time, so naturally they let the production of the BHP go on. FN itself discontinued the gun for a while because of a declining demand while production costs went up. However, due to new found demands, it was brought back in a new iteration that included some changes to the original design. These changes are criticized by some, welcomed by others. But the most important point when it comes to criticism is the high price. If you're looking for a high power yourself, you can either go for an original, a new model made by FN, or get one of the many clones. Like, for example, from Gearson or Springfield Armory, which are more like the original but cost only about half as much as the new model, or even less than that. You also get an increased capacity, which now stands at 15 rounds in the magazine and one in the chamber. Number 2, the Beretta 92FS. The Beretta 92FS is military designation as the Beretta M9 was a gun that ended the career of the 1911 with the U.S. military. It was officially adopted in 1984 and stayed in service for 33 years. In that time, it saw combat in Panama as well as in Iraq and Afghanistan. In the end, it had to give way to the SIG M17. LAPD and the LA Sheriff's Department led the way in their adoption of the Beretta 92FS and many other domestic law enforcement agencies followed. Well, the 1911 traces its origin back to legend John Browning. For the Beretta, it's the history of the company itself. Founded in 1526, it is so rich of experience that a success like the Beretta 92FS was not surprising. Even 1911 aficionados and renowned firearm industry experts Bill Wilson and Ken Hackathorn praised this gun as the most reliable handgun they ever used, but also shoots as well as a 1911. These statements from these two mean a lot. And the Breda 92 is a very fine pistol indeed. While many of today see the Glock as one of the most hyped pistols, before the plastic wonder, it was the Beretta 92 that was all the rage. Number 1. The Ruger Standard 22 Long Rifle Yeah, Ruger made it on this list with its standard chambered for 22 long rifle. This gun is for rimfire semi-auto pistols, what the 1911 and the high power is for centerfire ones. It is the cold standard in its category against which all others are judged. Introduced in 1949, it was a pistol that started the careers of Alex Sturm and Bill Ruger with Sturm, Ruger & Co., which is now one of the industry giants in America. The Ruger Standard 22 Long Rifle has proven itself over and over through the decades, coming in more and more new variants and more and more customizations. In a silenced edition, it was even used by Green Berets to achieve some stealthy kills against Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese Army. On the civilian market, it became a well-known plinker and paper puncher. There you have it, guys. The best of the best semi-automatic pistols of the world. If you think that your favorite gun has to be on this list as well, well hey, let us know in the comments and tell us what makes it so great, or in other words, so popular, that it deserves to be named along with our picks.